can everybody hear me? I'm going to apologize up front. The, the rain lately has made me kind of hoarse because of my allergies. So if you can't hear me, just help me speak up. Um, that, that video is very powerful, obviously, and uh, really tells the story better than, than I ever could. And, and the people in the video, the people here tonight, uh, told the story. And, and this is a reality that we face in eastern Kentucky every day. Uh, certainly at uh, Jackson Energy here in Clay County. Um, East Kentucky Power, a little bit about us. Uh, we're based in uh, Winchester, and we are a co uh, cooperative, just like Jackson Energy. Um, if you're a member of Jackson Energy, you own a little piece of the company, um, and you have an interest in that and an opportunity to participate in the governance. Well, similarly, uh, Jackson Energy is one of 16 co-ops that owns East Kentucky Power. And they sit on our board. Uh, Landis Cornett, who's here tonight, is Jackson Energy's uh, uh, representative on our board. And he and Carol come to our meetings, and uh, they, they have a tough job. They ask some tough questions, and that's good because what they're looking to do is ensure that we're making the right decisions, that we're, we're providing affordable, reliable electricity for you, not just now, but in, into the future. Kind of looking over that horizon to see what's what's coming and what do we need, need to be prepared for. <clears throat> um, obviously, in the last few years, um, we faced a lot of regulations from the federal government. Um, regulations that have to do with the emissions from our power plants, regulations on the ash that's in the product of <coughs> burning coal, regulations on the water that we use to, to cool our plants. Most recently, uh, as the video talks about, uh, we're facing regulations on carbon dioxide emissions from our power plants. Now this is something a little different from regulations that we faced in the past. Um, you know, it, um, carbon dioxide uh, there's technology to separate that from the emissions, but it's really in a, in a research and development phase right now. Uh, to retrofit a power plant with something like a scrub that separates those emissions out, it, it just really doesn't exist. And we have uh, big concerns about when it does exist, how much is that going to cost? Uh, as the video stated, over 90% of the power in Kentucky comes from coal. About 90% of the power we generate is fueled by coal. We have uh, four power plants. Three of those are, are fueled by coal. Uh, one of those power plants, as of next spring, will be shutting down as a result of a different regulation, not the, the carbon dioxide regulation, but we're concerned about having the capacity we need to provide affordable, reliable electricity for you. Um, we are right now looking at the two rules that have been, been proposed for the carbon dioxide uh, issue. One of those, which was proposed, uh, I think, in December, uh, has to do with power plants that will be built in the future. Uh, and effectively, what that rule says is that we have to use that technology I was just talking about that, that really is still in, in, a, in a research and development phase. So effectively what that means is that for the foreseeable future, there's probably not going to be any coal plants built in the United States if that rule is finalized and is, is written right now. Um, in Kentucky, uh, we've used coal since the very beginning for electric generation. It's 90% uh, of what we generate today. And as a result, as the video talks about, we have some of the lowest electric rates in the, in the nation. Uh, we're very concerned that as we're forced to move to different types of things, whether that's natural gas, nuclear, or something else, that the cost of electricity, your monthly power bill, is going to go up. Um, so that's that's one one rule we're looking at. Another rule that was just proposed by the the EPA in the past couple of months has to do with our existing power bill. As the video stated, we, we've spent about a billion and a half dollars 
building new power plants, and retrofitting our existing power plants uh, over the past 10 years to be ready for a lot of other regulations that are out there. And, and it's our sincere hope that as a result of, of this uh, carbon dioxide rule, those investments won't be uh, wiped away. We hope that we're able to run those plants for a good long time and recoup that investment because if you know, we build a plant and hope that's going to run for 30 years and then the EPA does something that we have to shut it down, that's a cost that we bear and ultimately our members bear. We're very concerned about that. We understand the conditions in, in East Kentucky. Uh, we understand uh, high unemployment, the uh, uh, income rates, uh, and this is something that, that we're trying to convey to the federal regulators. Um, in your seats tonight, I think everybody has one of these. Uh, this is an initiative that uh, our national association NRECA is doing uh, action.coop or the cooperative action. Uh, they're trying to get as many comments as they can to the EPA and right now there's a comment period open where you can you can register your comments, your feelings about the regulation that has been proposed. Uh, and, and we hope as many people as possible do that uh, because uh, it adds up and your voice really does matter. Um, now, now I, I do want to say uh, we're not uh, uh, hanging everything on, on a hope and a prayer that EPA does the right thing. Our co-ops are, are working together to, to proactively do some things for Eastern Kentucky. For example, uh, the SOAR initiative, which uh, uh, Congressman Rogers and Governor Bashir have championed. Uh, we have uh, our economic development director is actively involved in that, as is uh, uh, several people, I believe, from Jackson Energy. And we believe there's a real opportunity to, to do some things, to open up some investments and, and create some jobs in East Kentucky. Uh, we're also working together on economic development. Uh, we believe there's a great potential for East Kentucky, but we need some time to do that. And what we, we really don't need is for the cost of energy to go up because uh, the people at the end of the line, the people in the in the video, uh, there a lot of them are at a point where they just can't afford to pay anymore. And the real impact, not only for Eastern Kentucky but for the entire state, is the impact on industry and manufacturing. Uh, you know, even in areas like. Lexington and Louisville and Northern Kentucky, there's a lot of businesses, a lot of jobs that depend on low electric rates. And we're very concerned that as a result of the rules that have been proposed, those rates are going to go up to a point where those businesses really can't afford to stay, not only in Kentucky, but in the United States. And those are jobs that, that could be going overseas uh, to places where they don't necessarily care so much about how much carbon dioxide is in the, in the uh, atmosphere. So uh, we're concerned about that. We're, we're working proactively to, to uh, do some things, but we appreciate what you have done. Uh, certainly the people in the video and making your voice heard, the people who filled this card out to make your voice heard, and, and, and we ask you to keep it up and, and thank you for your support. So we've uh, kind of heard the dilemma that we're all in, kind of all in the same boat. Uh, and contrary to popular uh, belief, Jackson Energy employees do not get a discount on their electricity. Okay? Uh, That's East Kentucky Power. So uh, we're all kind of in the same boat. Uh, you've been told what we can collectively do as a group to let our voice be known. Real simple thing. These are proposed rules. They're not finalized now. Okay, so let your voice be known. We have two individuals that represent uh, a state or a U.S. representative and a 
senator here tonight. I'm sure they'd be glad to talk to you about the subject. Put you on the spot, please. But uh, what can we do individually to help off offset maybe the potential of increased electric costs, okay? Jackson Energy has some answers that hopefully Rodney's going to share with you here and maybe give you some insight on what you can do personally to defray some of the impact, if you will, if the EPA regulations are actually implemented. So Rodney's going to come and share that. <coughs> heard a lot of information tonight already, but Jackson Energy is a little more than 75 years old. Now, I'm not going to try to recap all those 75 years, but as long as I've been there, for more than half of those years, we have encouraged people to conserve and to be energy efficient. You've heard information about how the cost of electricity is rising and even could go higher. I've seen some of those increases over the years since I've been there. And we continually talk to our members about ways to, to conserve. And we have several programs of, of how that you can be energy efficient and use less electricity. Now the cost per unit is not going down. However, through these energy efficiency programs that Jackson Energy and East Kentucky Power have, you can use less units, causing your overall bill to be a, a little bit less. And that's what we encourage people to do. At Jackson Energy, some of those programs are tune-up. We call it, it's the heat pump tune-up. And we all know what we are referring to when we take our cars in for a tune-up. We hope that when we leave that mechanic, that he has done something to those cars to maybe make it get, make them get a little bit more miles per gallon, or something to make them run a little bit better. A heat pump tune-up is ba that's basically what a heat pump tune-up is. Jackson Energy offers to its members uh, a inspection by a HVAC technician, whereas it will, will come into the home and look look at at your heating and cooling units and tune them up just a little. A uh, major component of that tune-up is the duct sealing, and that is to seal the air leaks in that duct work. We offer that to our, our consumers. The button-up program and air sealing, button-up <coughs> is a program where we add insulation to homes. We all know what added insulation means. It causes the homes to be more comfortable uh, and causes them to use less energy to heat and cool. We have a program called resistance heat, going from resistance heat to a heat pump. In the video, you saw where that uh, a major component of our, a, a, a major uh, number of our members live in mobile homes in, in this area. Most of those mobile homes come from the factory with resistance electric heat installed in them. If you upgrade that resistance heat to the heat pump, Jackson Energy will help you with some of that cost in the form of a rebate, going from resistance heat to a heat pump. This also uh, is, works in conventional homes as well if you have resistance heat. The Touchstone Energy Home is a new home program. <coughs> If you build a new home to the Touchstone Energy Standards, we are told that that home will be 30% more energy efficient than just the regular standard that most uh, uh, contractors build homes to in, uh, today. Jackson Energy has a program with, that we call the House Smart Program. That's a uh, conventional home, whereas that we can come in and do a blower door test and point out the areas that need to be uh, tightened up, uh, maybe uh, changing out your your, uh, your heating and cooling system and causing your house to actually use elec less electricity and the, the uh, payment that it takes to do that work 
is paid for by the savings on your energy bill. We have that program that we offer to consumers. We've got a simple saver program. That's where the Jackson Energy installs switches on your uh, air conditioners and your water heaters. And in time, in peak period times, those switches will, will cycle those units on and off in a way to where that you do, do not experience any discomfort and Jackson Energy and East Kentucky Power uh, sees a savings on the peak uh, use of electricity. <coughs> we believe in those programs uh, so much that we offer rebates and incentives for all of them. So far this year, Jackson Energy and East Kentucky Power has issued more than $80,000. And this just goes through the first six months of this year. So our members are taking advantage, and we thank you for doing that, but we've got to do more uh, in, in, that, in that way. A couple of three other programs that Jackson Energy has brought to its members in the past, uh, oh, let's say couple to three years, uh, we have a prepay program. That's where the, our members pay for electricity up front before it's used. And uh, we have more than 3,500 members that have, have, have uh, decided to go that route. And it is a very popular program. And our members uh, tell us that, that, that they're much more satisfied going this route. You basically pay uh, in smaller increments. You may just decide to pay $20 or $50 uh, a couple or three times a month rather than paying two or three hundred dollars at, at the end of the month. Smart Hub, we have a, we have implemented what we call Smart Hub, uh, and these, this information is, is available to our members through the web. You can go to uh, our web page and click a couple of times and, uh, and pull up your information at your home and you can actually see your meter reading or your use hour by hour. You can see the time of day that you use the most, the time of day that, it, that you're using uh, less. These types of programs, if you use them, help you to understand how you are using power and help you to reduce that uh, in, in your home. Paperless billing. I think you heard on the video that Jackson Energy has about 52,000 52, 52, customers. We've got more than 5,200 within a stone's throw of here. Uh, 52,000 customers. It cost us about a dollar a customer to mail you a bill each month. That's $52,000 each month. We're asking our customers to go with paperless billing. Uh, and when you do that, we can save about a dollar per customer. That's been a popular program so far. However, we just have implemented that probably less than six months ago. And, and that program is still beginning to get, uh, get momentum. But all these things help you and Jackson Energy to save money. It helps to uh, keep more money at home. The more money that we can keep, the, the less that we have to ask you to, to, uh, to upfront to us in order to pay for the increases that you, some of the increases that you heard uh, through, through the video and you heard Dick uh, say something to the tune that we have spent more than a billion dollars in, uh, in some of these uh, to, to comply with some of these EPA rules. And that's just what we've done so far. And we've not even got started yet. There's some information in the back on many of these programs that I have referred to. Feel free to take any of that. Give us a call. We'll come out to your house, do an evaluation, and try to let you know uh, uh, about the uh, 
upgrades that you need to make in, in your home in order for your home to be more energy efficient. With that, I'll give it back to Larry. Ms. Carroll. Ms. <laughs> Carroll's coming forward. I want to uh, remind everybody about uh, Customer Appreciation Day we're going to have here in Laurel County. Or, or, Keep me out of here. Okay? <laughs> We've been to Port Laurel County, Clay County, uh, September the fifth. Is that right, Rodney? Well, uh, yeah. I can't. I can't read stuff with glasses in my hand. Yeah, September the fifth. Ten a.m. to two p.m. out at our office here uh, at Garrett. Uh, so we've got a problem. We're all in the same boat. Okay, we know what we can do accurately to let our voice be known. We know now what we can do personally to try to help defray the cost of our electricity. Okay. Now, is Jackson Energy through? Is East Kentucky Power through? No, we're not through. And Carol's going to introduce a new video to let you know what else we're doing. You know, as, it meant, as they mentioned earlier, um, Jackson Energy is here to provide reliable power to our members in our region that we serve. But we're also committed to economic and community development. We're employees, but we live here. We work here for your friends, your family, your neighbors. And we care about the future of our region. And as you can see from the EPA regulations, it's imperative that our region attracts new industry. The new industry will bring those much needed jobs to Clay County and surrounding counties. As you can see, that's what we desperately need, and we need it now. As they mentioned earlier, the SOAR initiative through Congressman Rogers and Governor Brashear, Jackson Energy is actively involved in that. We have an employee on the executive committee. Many of you know Haley McCoy. She's on the executive committee. We also have multiple employees, including myself, that participate in the working groups. We have attended, we've listened, we've actually um, tried to help the initiatives in the SOAR, and we're looking forward to see what that brings for our region. We're actively committed to recruiting industry in our region. And with the help of East Kentucky Power, we created professional brochures and a video that highlights the incentives that Jackson Energy offers and the natural resources of our region. And I want to show you that video right now. If you and your company are looking for a place to grow, then Kentucky is a land of exceptional opportunity our stunning natural treasures. Central location. Low business costs. Outstanding transportation. And dedicated workforce. Make Kentucky a great place to build a business and a life. The birthplace of Lincoln. The Colonel and the Chen. The home of innovative technology. Healthcare. Manufacturing. Logistics. And the most exciting two minutes in sport. A place to stir the soul. Raise a family. And build a business. This is Kentucky. We are Jackson Energy, part of a network of 16 electric cooperatives that own East Kentucky Power. We're also a member of Touchstone Energy, America's largest utility network. Jackson Energy serves almost 52,000 members living in 15 counties in South Central Kentucky. Our cooperative belongs to Touchstone Energy, a national marketing alliance for electric cooperatives. And we're part of the PJM Interconnection, the world's largest centrally dispatched power grid. Working together, 
you will not find a cooperative more able and eager to work with you to make your project work. And we want you to make a home with it. Many of the world's most successful companies are already here. They found a superb quality of life and unparalleled business opportunities. Our transportation network is second to none. With two international cargo hubs, Louisville's UPS World Port and the DHL hub at Northern Kentucky International Airport, Kentucky ranks third in the nation in air cargo. Five commercial airports and more than 50 general aviation airports serve every corner of the state. And Kentucky's location is right in the middle of everything. With five interstate highways, 2,500 miles of rail, and 1,100 miles of commercially navigable waterways connecting to major ports on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, businesses in Kentucky can easily connect with the world's largest markets. We're home to eight state universities and scores of private, community, and technical colleges, including nearby Union College, Lindsay Wilson College, Alice Lloyd College, and other schools training tomorrow's workforce. Seven industrial parks provide a wide inventory of prepared sites and buildings ready for occupants. And Kentucky's electric rates are among the best in America. In fact, Jackson Energy offers an economic development rider that provides even lower power costs to industries that locate here. Let us introduce you to stunning natural treasures that attract climbers and hikers from around the world and discover a small town way of life just minutes from Interstate 75, major shopping areas, and four hospital complexes. Your company can even get zero interest federal loans through Jackson Energy, along with other incentives through the Southeastern Kentucky Federal Promise Zone program. Kentucky's business costs rank among the lowest in the nation, and we have dedicated workers ready to help you build your business. their attention. We're hoping that video does just that. Jackson Energy is going to actively recruit where we're going to pass this video out as well as the professional brochures. We're going to hit the road. We work with the Kentucky Economic Development Cabinet and your industrial development authorities in all of our counties, but we're going to do something different. We're going to go knock on some doors. We're going to see what we can do to attract some of those industries, and that's different. That's not what other utilities have done. They usually work through the channels, you go through the proper personnel. Well, Rodney and Larry have got a job ahead of them. We're going to go out and we're going to try to recruit some industry. Because as you know, our region needs jobs more than anything. As it mentioned in the video, we have an economic development rider for large industries that will actually help lower their electric bill. We're some of the lowest electric rates in the nation, and that is true if you look at some of the other states. We're unparalleled at our rates, but we have a rider now that these large industries, if they locate on Jackson Energy, we can offer them an even lower rate. That's a big incentive to some of these industries. We also have 0% interest loans through the USDA, federal government. We can provide loans for equipment, buildings, etc., to these large industries at 0% interest. I don't think you'll find that in any of the banks in this region or in the state. So we just wanted to share with you, you know, there are some trials that we're going through right now, but Jackson Energy is actively going to do something about it. And we wanted you, our members, to know because we're doing this because if you don't exist, we don't exist because you are Jackson Energy. 